if you haven't noticed already, humans kind of suck. They stab you in the back, bathe their hands in your blood, and then expect from tyranny to be unstuck. But instead, it's betrayal, it's anger, it's pain. You're expected to keep a date at Philippi with the guy that did it to you, when really, he's kind of insane. His wife is a self-harmer, his best friend is crazy, and yet you're expected to haunt him, like, no problem, baby. It's not like you don't have stuff to do. Although, your list did go down a few, since, you know, you gouged out your eyes. Oh wait, that wasn't you. That was the guy that slept with his mom the whole night through. <laughs> just to be clear, that brought MILF to a whole new level. And also, just to be clear, MILF is a mother I'd like to snuggle. But that guy really was crazy. Unfortunately, you can't really name one that hasn't been crazy lately. With the bombs and the planes and the parachutes falling, it's almost like you're on a deserted island. And the smoke is so thick that for your life, you're crawling. While all the while seeing two images above your bed, a dark and a light, one's a shell and one's a pig's head. Whether this be a sign of dictatorship or revolution, you just don't know, but one thing is for sure, it feels like you're going in circles and you really don't have time to blow. For now, you're running as quietly and as quickly as you possibly can because now, not only is it a child that you're following, but behind you comes a man. He's large and angry and cowering like a baby inside. He's a prince and cruel to be kind on the outside, yet you still love him. You still love your child. Every motion was made for both of them. Everything was for them. Yes, Brutus made Caesar fall for the sake of his country because he loved it. The only reason Odysseus made his travels worthwhile was because he loved his wife. No matter what, Candide was always looking for his true love. Yes, King Henry was a jerk, but he still loved. Oconquo killed his son, but he still ran after his daughter because he loved her. And I know this is arguable, but when you think about it that way, humans don't suck so much anymore. Because if the one you love is human, then it can't be all gore. When you love someone, that's when you start to feel better about everything ever, and that's when you twist the lever, hoping for a high number, because the farther you go, the further you get. Because loving is living, if you think about it. That's why people sing, dance, laugh, cry about it. It's why people fall on their knees and pray to God, any God, to please help them believe. Because this, right here, is not a board game. This is a roller coaster of dreams and pain, and yeah, it sucks. The world sucks, but so do whirlpools, and that doesn't stop us from going for a swim every once in a while. Love brings us together. It sets us apart. The very word can send someone packing. The very action can send someone for a pregnancy test at the quick mart. Yes, it's terrifying, and yes, I'm oversimplifying, but love is always, always here. My point is is that, yeah, tragedy happens. Death, drugs, and famine. Yes, we throw rocks, and we have a thirst for power. Humans can be pigs and have a taste for happy hour. But once upon a time, a bug told me, life, what an invention. I would say, love, what an invention. Because loving is living if you think about it. That's why people sing, dance, laugh, cry about it. And I know I've said it before, but I sense some confusion. It's not the four humors that make us human, but a love-pain fusion. And sometimes pain may outweigh the love. It just does. But that's not what hope is for. Hope isn't to heal the pain, but to give us something to hold on to, to make it bearable. And there's no indefinite cure, but something to remember is that pain is a reminder that we have so far to go. And what hope merely does is hold out its hand and say, I will help you grow. This poem could go on for years, but I'll keep it short. What gives me hope 
is love and the people that are the loving sort.